Hey there guys, so I've got a new tutorial that I'm going to show today uh, looking at something called a holy hand grenade. Um, it's pretty cool in terms of like things like materials and stuff that we're going to use. If you're not if you're not familiar um, with Autodesk 3 Max 2021, uh, they've updated like the materials so that the default um, renderer is now Arnold, whereas previously uh, to this if the renderer was uh, the, the good old scanline renderer. Um, so I just thought it'd be cool to kind of make something um, and show you how you can apply some of these uh, materials to it. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, jump straight right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and first off, I've got my Houdini engine plugin just down here, so I'm just gonna go and hide that so I've got some more space in my parameter section just down here. Uh, just Alt W to full screen here. And what I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna choose is a geo steer. Um, I am in a crate panel for this as well, um, so I'm just gonna pull that open like that, and then I'm gonna change the radius to uh, 50. Enter to confirm. Um, and I also want to use um, the geodesic base type. I want it to be Octa, so the default, which is Icosa. It's just doing that there. Um, and I've pressed F4 as well on the keyboard just so I can see my edged faces on that one just there. Awesome. Uh, right click to come out of creation mode. Um, and then I'll go to the modify um, tab just up here. And I'll go ahead and add an edit poly rather than converting that to an edit poly i'll add it on the stack so it's uh, non-destructive just in case anything goes wrong and um, so i'll move into my front view first and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to uh, vertex mode so what i want to do is i want to create some straight lines just going down here um to sort of straighten these up because as you can see they curve around um, just for the shape of it so all i need to do for that is i just need to grab these vertex points just here um, and there is kind of a, a, um, a line coming off there, it's, don't know, obviously if I zoom in it, it stays the same so that's not really helpful, um, but I want to be able to align these and some, um, we've got options to do that down here in the uh, edit geometry section, XYZ, um, so yeah there's kind of like a one in three chance, you know you can press the right one, but if you want to know exactly which one it is, um, what you can do is you can just look down here and whichever um, axes is at a right angle to the vertex points you've got selected that's the one that you want to choose so obviously we've got X coming off here um, and if I look really closely I can see that just just about says X so that's good so I just need to hit X there um, and then do the same for this one just here I can't grab them both at the same time and if I did that it would align them but it would line them at the same time so it would end up having these two lines in the middle down here because it kind of it averages out the distance between it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to grab this line just here singly and again look at my right angle. It's going up so I can see that is Z in this case. So I'm just going to hit that there and then I'm just going to do the same. This one just here as well. Brilliant. And then I'll just jump into my top view so I can see my final one. Um, so obviously you can see these ones are straight um, because I achieved that when I was in the front mode, the front viewport, sorry. Um, but this one here, I mean, I can look down here and see that it says Y, but also I know it's the only one that I haven't used yet, so I can kind of work out that it must have been Y to align those all together. Nice. Okay. Press P to go back into perspective view. Um, I can see, yep, straight lines there, straight lines there. Awesome. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into my front view again. And just this time I'm going to switch to polygon mode, um, which I can press number four on the keyboard if I wanted to as a shortcut, if you prefer that shortcut. Um, and I'm just going to select these ones here, hold down control. Hold down control is add to selection. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back into my top view again, and then hold down control again, and grab those ones there. Awesome. Uh, so whilst I'm here, because I'm going to be adding materials later, um, I'm going to change to make sure this is set to a specific material ID. So I'm going to scroll down here. Um, it's currently set to two. Um, I'll change this to one. So just hit one and hit enter. Okay. Um, and then, so what I want to do is I want to kind of extrude some of these things out. Um, oh, sorry, I've just realized what I need to do actually with this is I need to go into the front view first, sorry. Front view, oh, I've lost all my selections there. There we go. Um, and I actually need to remove this bottom line just here, don't I? Yeah, there we go. So all that should be set to ID of one, that's cool. Um, so yes, as I was saying, I want to extrude these out so I've got a nice smooth line going around it. Um, but um, I also want to kind of give um, these extra bits here kind of like that grenade rough texture 
um, that we see on grenades. And this is a holy hand grenade, so that makes sense. So shortcut key is control I to invert selection. And I'm just gonna jump up there just to, in perspective, just to make sure that I'm okay. Yep, yeah, it looks fine. And I will make sure as well that all these IDs are set to two, so just type in two in the material ID section. There we go, so I've got two and one. Um, perfect. So with this bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll back up and find my uh, bevel modifier, hit the settings for bevel, and I'm going to change bevel to one, so it comes out a little bit, and then I'm gonna change the outline to minus one. Hit enter again. And I want to hit the drop down just here because it's set at the moment by default to group normals, but I'm going to change this to by polygon and click tick to confirm. Okay. And if I just click off that and then press F4, just so we can see how that looks with our edge faces, and um, we can see that's kind of the grenade sort of type mesh um, aspect that we're going for. And, uh, that looks okay. Brilliant. Okay, look. Um, I'm just going to set my edit poly as well because I realised one of the, one of the schoolboy errors that I've done just here, um, which is bad because I'm always telling off people for not doing it, but I always do it myself. Um, it's not centering my object to world origin point, so I'm just going to press W to go into movement, um, the move tool, sorry, um, or I can click up here, um, and I'm just going to right click on these little up and down arrows just to make sure that's perfectly. It was it was almost in the centre, but. Um, Let's make sure it's perfectly in the center. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go back to polygon mode again, or number four on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to scroll down and just type in two here and then select ID. Um, cool, so that's all selected fine. And it doesn't actually matter which way they're around. It doesn't matter if like the, you've got these set as two and then these are set as one. It doesn't matter. As long as they're different from each other, that's the main thing. If you go into the select ID bit, sorry, and press one in here and select ID. That makes it a little bit easier to actually grab those bits. So two there, cool. Um, but yeah, you guys can just go ahead and do that just by selecting the right number in there to make sure that you select the right polys that you're after. Okay, so I can apply my extrude modifier to this now. So I'm going to go up here. Um, sorry, I'm going to come down here. Sorry, I don't want to extrude it as mo uh, an actual modifier. So I'm going to extrude it as um, one of the modifier tools. So go down to here to the settings, and then I set the bevel to one, so I'm going to set this to two, hit enter to confirm, and you'll see that it's moving all off in one direction again because it's got that default group normal selected, so we're just going to change this to local normals instead, hit tick to confirm, and deselect it by clicking off it, and then, uh, yeah, there we go, awesome, that's press G on the keyboard as well if your grid's kind of ruining it for you a little bit in terms of the aesthetics. Great stuff. Okay, so we've got the main body, um, so we just need to do a couple more things just to turn this into um, the holy hand grenade. Um, so I'm gonna again, I'm gonna make sure I am in polygon mode. Press F4 on the keyboard just to see your edge faces. I'm gonna, I'm holding down Control, just selecting these faces on top here, um, and I want to sort of flatten these off as well. So I'm gonna use my align option again that we used earlier, um, but I'm obviously I've got. Polygon selected this time rather than vertices, um, and it's you know, it's facing it's, again the right angle is Z. So I'm just going to hit Z there just to flatten that off. Um, and it's pulled the sides up a little bit, but I think it's you know it's, it's negligible. It's not going to impact on the aesthetics too much. So keeping those polygons selected, going to scroll back up, choose the inset option, um, and I believe the number you're looking for is five, obviously. And if you want it to be a bit bigger or a bit smaller, that's fine. You go with what you think looks best. Click tick to confirm. Um, so I'm just trying to create a smaller selection area in here. That's basically what I'm doing. Just so that now I can now go to extrude. And I'll change the value of that to 10. Hit enter to confirm. Um, and so I'm going to hit the plus. One, two, three. So I've got a total of four blocks there, so I could have just typed in 40, or you, you might be thinking I could have just typed in 40, but if I'd done that, I wouldn't have these edge faces in place for me, it'd be to, for me to be able to select these two faces if I just make sure I'm facing on the front perspective, looking at the view cube, so I'm the front there, wicked. So grab that there, grab that there, and hit extreme again, like so, click it to confirm. And there we go. Sorted. Uh, 
F4, edge face is off. So that's the general idea um, of what we're going for here. Um, we could spend longer uh, really refining the look of this cross, you know, so it kind of it curves in with the bits that come out and stuff, just make it look really nice. Um, and by all means, you know, um, please, you know, do spend that time doing that if that's something you want to do. But I think I'm just going to leave it to stay for the time being. Um, so I want to set this up so that um, I can apply my materials to this. Um, I'm not going to actually add any specific lighting. I'm just going to take advantage of Free Studio Max's kind of uh, default lighting um, that's applied when we have surfaces that light um, can bounce off of. So I'll go back to the Create Panel, uh, the Create Tab, sorry, and then I'll go to, I'll just grab a plane, and then I'll just scroll right that there, and I'll just drag that out like that. W on the keyboard, just to go into the Move tool, just pull it out underneath. It doesn't have to be like touching it or a certain distance away, just as long as it is underneath it. I'm just going to go to the Scale tool as well, which is R on the keyboard. Just scale it out, just make it really, really big. I'll go to E on the keyboard, which is Rotation Mode. Hold down Shift um, and rotate around. So holding down Shift, um, it duplicates. Um, so you can duplicate in movement in the move tool, rotation, and scale tool, of course, um, by holding down Shift. Just one copy is fine. Roughly about 90 degrees. Feel free to hit turn your snaps on if you wanted to, if you want it specifically to exactly 90 degrees. But um, I find that you don't need it. And to be exact, it's just literally something again for light to bounce off of. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just hit the um, the teapot with the lightning symbol on it, which you may or may not know um, is the uh, button to create a render. <laughs> uh, and you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, there's already some kind of, there's a little bit of reflection down here um, at the bottom. I'll pull out just so it's a little better. Um, so yeah, it's uh, without any kind of even adding any materials on this, it's already kind of trying to do its job, which is cool. Okay, so I'll just close that down, cancel that just there, um, and we're just going to make this real simple. Just going to press M on the keyboard, which is a shortcut for Material Editor. Go to Modes, um, and go to Compact Material Editor. Um, apologies in advance if it's just got really noisy. Um, my laptop that I'm doing this on. Um, I think it's just because I just hit render and it's like, whoa, you're doing something computationally expensive here, so I'm going to make a lot of noise now because you're doing that. Um, but yeah, I hope that's going to calm down a bit and hope that's not too distracting. So yeah, I've just gone into modes and compact material editor mode um, if you're not already in this view. And I'll just choose the first slot, go to where it says physical material, change this to a multi sub object, I'll discard the old material there. Um, we're going to use a total of three. We're going to use a total of three, um, yeah, three different materials for this. So um, we don't have to do this. Um, I always say that. I always say you don't have to do this, but perhaps it's just because I'm trying to be a little bit neat and tidy. Um, we don't need ten, so I'm just going to click delete until we're left with three. Awesome. Um, and if you want to, you can name these as well. Um, but I think for this, because it's keeping it quite simple. Um, we don't need to do that for this time around. So I'm just going to click on where it says none, just here, and I'm going to choose um, the default uh, material for um, Arnold is physical material, um, which is fine, you know, because um, that's great, it's great material, uh, and it does a lot of great things down here. Um, I would just say that it's perhaps, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of advanced options in there as well, um, and because I could just easily use this. Um, but I like to kind of show people maybe a more straightforward way of doing things and um, just less options means Potentially less things to go wrong whilst you're kind of still getting confidence with this and learning how to do it So, you know, you, as I say you can you could just go in and choose physical material and do this as well uh, But I'm just going to go to surface and standard surface um, Which is still a very powerful material, but again not quite as fun. So double click on that to confirm um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the base color way up to one, kind of like Photoshop, like which for some reason it's set to 0.8 as a, as default. I just whack it all the way up to one, so it's like full transparency. Um, and then I'll just go for um, like maybe like a nice gold color, goldish color, I should say. There, and then down here in the specular, I'm just going to turn the mass all the way up to uh, to one. See how that works. 
I'm going to jump back up by clicking on go to parent just here and I'm just going to drag this material onto here just there um, oh, I'm actually, I actually want the gold on these bits around here so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag down to there and I'm going to copy it first like so go into here change the color of it to something that's uh, so kind of here I want it to be like kind of a bit more chromey chrome sort of silverish type thing click on this to show that on the material um, go back up so I actually want them to be the opposite way around so at the moment I've got it where is that which is which looks nice you know that's that's fine if I mean and, and maybe you guys you know go oh, yeah I like that that's that's what I want you want it that way around and if you do that's cool not a problem um, however or laptops stirring up again the cancel before it blows up um, just gonna swap those around so I'm gonna click and drag that down there comes up the option do you want to swap them around yes please click OK there we go that's the effect that I want just there gold on that bit excellent good stuff um, and I think what I'll do as well is I will just drag this one um, which I'm, I'm thinking if you're using 3D Studio Max, I mean these seem to be like the default materials. This one's um, ceramic, so I'm just going to drag that onto these planes here just so it's um, got that kind of white around it. Makes it just a little bit lighter and bounces off the chrome quite nicely as well. Cool, okay. Alright, so um, that is how we do that. Um, what we can do, which can be quite nice, um, is also bring in our own kind of custom material for this. Um, but then some, then comes the challenge of um, how do we kind of match what's going on here with the side in terms of the colour. So, I mean, what I'm talking about here is adding some kind of jewels or an attempt to sort of try and put some jewels in here to make it look a little bit more realistic, perhaps. Um, which we do through um, adding something like um, those jewels from uh, maybe find a picture online and whack it into Photoshop um, and add it on as a material. So I'm going to show you the process in a second how to do that. But the other kind of consideration um, that we need to take on board is that um, we need to try and match this color for this one. I haven't really found an effective way of doing this yet, um, simply because the way that colors are set up um, inside of Fusion Max at the moment, I'd be hoping there's be some kind of hexadecimal reference number in here or these values up here next to red, green, blue somehow um, kind of correspond and translate through to Photoshop. But I've, I've messed around with these values and they don't seem to work. So um, my kind of workaround, um, which is not, you know, amazing, but I mean, it may, I, I might get some points for um, trying to make it work, I guess. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it's not like ideal, but it does the job is to use the snip tool, just like you saw me doing, um, and opening this up and basically finding this colour and taking a snip of it, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this into Photoshop in a second, okay? Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm going to close this down, um, and I just need to go into uh, my Holy Hand Grenade, uh, which I'm going to rename up here as well now. So, Holy, holy Hand Grenade. I think the concept of early hand grenade comes from um, Monty Python, perhaps. I think that's where it, that's where it comes from. So F4 to show the edge faces. I'm just going to grab the front and the back like so. So we're going to add um, an unwrap UVW map onto this. Now, if you're not familiar with an unwrap UVW, um, basically it allows you to map. Um, the uh, faces, the polygons of your model in such a way that you can push it through to things like Photoshop or um, things like Quicksort Mixer, um, Substance Painter um, and sort of paint directly on those faces so that when you bring it back into um, a program like 3 Studio Max or if you're using like an engine, a game engine like Unreal 4 um, then it will allow you to apply the textures to exactly where you want the textures to be applied to. Um, obviously these materials that we've already applied to it are kind of consistent as they go across it, you know, they're just it's consistently less gold colour uh, with metallic attached, uh, metallic also applied to it and same with the kind of the chrome. Um, so there's no kind of like detail as such 
Um, whereas obviously, um, if you're doing something in Photoshop or these other kind of um, digital art programs, um, you want to make sure it appears in the right place. Um, so you can apply an unwrap UVW map to the whole of this object, which is fine, but we're just going to apply it to um, these areas that we've got selected. And you do that by just selecting them in polygon mode, like I've done. Um, and then we just go to modify list, type in U, and it's unwrap UVW just there. Okay. Scroll down, open UV editor. And as you can see, this is not helpful at all at the moment because it's just set up um, so that they're literally on the side. Um, so that's not helpful. Um, just nice and simple. I mean, this this uh, modifier has so many, so many different options in it. Um, and you'll, uh, if you're someone that kind of really enjoys uh, UV mapping, um, then you can obviously spend a lot of time in here re-refining things. I think I think there's a lot of people out there that really enjoy doing UV mapping, um, and there's also a lot of people out there um, that don't like it. I'm one of those strange individuals that find it quite therapeutic, but, but there you go. So um, if you missed that, I'm just uh, clicking mapping, flat mapping, and click OK. All these options are fine, click OK. And so what you can see is that it's it's kind of put it out um, and flattened them down there for us. Um, we, kept, we could just leave it like this, and that would be fine. Uh, but because I'm going to have exactly the same on the front of the cross as I am on the back of the cross, I'm just going to see if I can get away with um, sometimes it works, nine times out of ten it works. Um, I wonder if today will be the one time out of ten it doesn't work. So I'm just going to click down here on element mode and that selects the whole thing for me rather than have me having to select each individual polygon again. And I'm going to go to mapping and flatten mapping again. So exactly the same thing, click OK. Um, and that's kind of what, what that's doing is it's flattened what I've got selected using um, the entirety of the tile space that we've got here. So I'll go ahead and do the same to the other one. Um, that mapping click OK awesome it has worked so you can see what's happened is it's just basically overlaid that over the top of the one which means that when we put this into something like Photoshop whatever we do in this space here will be mirrored exactly on the front as it is in the back because they're overlapping each other okay sometimes I've seen it before like where when you do this process um, it kind of it puts it like that almost um, and then like up there and so it doesn't quite work um, there are ways to get around that um, to sort of sort that out, um, but I won't go into that in this video today. So if that is happening for you, then I suggest what you do is you just grab both of them like that, and then just go back to flat mapping, um, and that view's fine. Like I said, I'm just trying to kind of make my workflow a little bit more efficient. That's what I'm doing, but there's no reason why we can't do that. Which just means we have to paint both of them in Photoshop rather than just painting one. So I'm just going to press Control Z to go back to how it was before. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, and I'm going to have mine overlapped. Hopefully you guys can too. So then I'll go to Tools, Render UVW Template. Um, I'm going to keep it just as 1K textures for the time being, 1024 by 1024. That's fine um, because we're not doing anything too fancy. Solid mode. I can untick Show Overlap because obviously I have overlapped mine already, so I'm aware they are overlapped. Very useful though if you've got lots of different um, faces, polygons around that you want to make sure they're not overlapping each other. Click on Render UV Template and it pops up like that for you. You can just click on save, um, and I'll just pop mine on the desktop, um, and I'll just call it, um, does it cross, oh, in the wrong bit, cross underscore UVW, and then you want to change this as well to a PNG file. Okay. Click save, click OK, that's fine. So now we can close that down, we can close that down, and we can close that down. Um, we want to bake, um, which is that's the name of the process the technique. Um, that's what it's referred to. We want to, uh, but basically what that means is we want to collapse um, all the information so that the, the model understands what the mapping data is. So it's a bit like uh, in Photoshop where you would kind of merge all the layers. Um, in this case, we're just kind of merging all the all the modifiers in the stack so that it's represented on the model so that it understands the, the mapping that we've applied to this, if that makes sense. If we don't do that, it won't work and it won't appear properly. So we just need to go to right click on uh, Unwrap PBW and click on Collapse or click Yes. Um, so that has now been committed to memory. It now knows that whatever we apply to that texture map that we've exported, once we pull it back in, it will appear in the right space. Um, that's the idea anyway, fingers crossed. 
and that's what will happen. Um, so I'll just open up Photoshop. Awesome, and then I'll go to open, um, and just on my computer, I'll go to desktop, where I'll click press UVW, click open. Okay, so um, I've opened up my uh, cross PNG file, um, and so what you would want to do is you want to start adding detail on top of this. So to do that, well, I mean, you could just come in with a brush and I could choose like color square brackets on the keyboard to make my brush bigger and smaller. And I could just do this. I could just kind of go over it like that, like so. And, and that would work, you know, that I could put that back in and it's fine because it would just, you know, on that cross, on on Visual Max, it would appear that color, so that's fine. But the problem with that, of course, is that then you can't really see the bounds of um, your object, um, and it sort of it stops you from having the ability to then actually um, specify detail and things like that. So I'm going to undo that, and then I'm actually going to create it as a new layer as well. Um, and what I want to do is I want to go over to my snip tool and make sure that's been copied so that I can then come into here and press Control V and go to my eyedropper tool, select that as a colour can now get rid of that copy layer um, as I say it's not the most glamorous way of um, getting that colour to come in but it does work, it, it is, it, I, I now have exactly the same colour as the colour that the rest of the cross is set to which is cool so I kind of want to go in here again, add a, a new layer and go to paintbrush um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and select the preview of my layer just here. And as you can see, because it's a PNG, um, when I hold down control and select the preview of the layer just here, it selects only it only selects things that are selectable, um, which basically means that because it's a PNG, because it's got a transparent background, the only thing that's showing is this section here, so that's quite useful. Um, I'm just going to make it slightly wider as well, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything, dot the I's, cross the T's, that kind of thing. So select, modify, expand, and I'll expand it by about 5 pixels, click OK, and then I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to do that like so, wicked, OK. Um, what I might also do as well is um, I'm going to find some kind of um, image, so I welcome, welcome you to the same thing, some kind of jewel. So I've gone and downloaded a, uh, a Ruby um, on my computer, so I'm going to write that in a second. I'm just going to press Control D on the keyboard to deselect that there. Just go File and uh, Place Embedded, Polish Ruby, click OK, boom, look at that, loving it. I'm just going to rotate that around by holding down Shift, I'm rotating it around. It's got a bit of a shadow actually, hmm, that's a pain. Um, can I sort that out? I didn't, I didn't notice that. Uh, right click over here, rasterize that layer so I can edit it. Just hide everything else for a second. I um, oh, wasn't intending to spend time doing this, but bear with me just a second, guys. Uh, like so. And I'll jump on it. Just put the white background in there so I can see it a bit better. Erase tool. Do it carefully, is that going to work? Yeah, okay, nothing to it, nothing too fancy, just good old erase tool. Go around it, oh, I don't know, go too far. Um, should probably be doing this with a graph. Oh my word, should probably be doing this with a graph. Oh my wordy, what am I doing? There we go. I feel like I need to kind of step away from this. And be like, Pete, you know, maybe it's actually spot on perfect. So. Yeah, I don't think that'll be okay. Uh, maybe you can find a better version than me than what I've got, but yeah, get rid of that Bring that back in. Um, cool. And turn auto sector, show times for control. There. Hold down Alt on the keyboard. Uh, he says but that's not working. Oh, I need to tick confirmation first that I'm happy. Then hold down Alt and drag. 
Nice. I do like the fact that um, Photoshop offers that as an option where you can do the spacing. That's quite cool. Is that what's that all right? Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. Um, and should I merge them together? Is there one there? Yeah. So click on the top one, hold down shift, hold someone, right click, merge those layers. Um, and if you wanted to, if you, I don't know, I actually don't know if it will work that well, um, we can see, make sure your brush is all the way down to zero hardness, white, and then that work, a bit too intense maybe, um, or maybe i just go with it, you can always come back and change it if it looks terrible. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm thinking it needs to be a little bit smaller. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. See if that works. I don't know if that's going to work that well, but we can try, can't we? So file and save as. Um, stop showing me this. I just want to save on the computer, please. And then just down to PNG. Hit enter. Click OK. And then we'll go over to here. Press M on the keyboard again, um, and what we'll do this time is the pr just the easiest way to do this um, is making sure that um, we just drag it in. It's probably the easiest way to do this. So I'm just going to go to desktop and then just drag that straight onto where it says non, just there, like so. You'll see it set up as a physical material. Um, that's fine. Go in here. Um, and then what we do is you can see it's set up in there. That's where the actual file is. So just go back up there. Um, and then I'll just set the mattiness to one. Um, and it's not applying it yet because I um, earlier, um, when I selected all these bits here, even though we put the UVW um, map on this, I didn't change the material ID for this. Um, so I can just now go and change this to three. Like that, okay. Um, mine remembered that I had the polygon selected from before, which is useful. Um, so yeah, it should add it like that. The white has come through here, but we'll see if it works when we go into render mode. See if it looks at that. Oh, I have them. Um, does it look effective though, or does it just look really silly? Mm, we might just be able to get away with it. Okay. So I'm going to try and bring this to a close because I'm, I'm mindful that um, this has turned into quite a long tutorial now. Uh, but just before I go, I just wanted to show you something cool um, that you can do in Photoshop um, that can be done in, a, in perhaps a much more effective way if you're using things like Quixel Mixer um, or Substance Painter. But I'm just going to show you very quickly. It's kind of like the old school way of doing it for, for people that didn't have Quixel Mixer. Um, what you can do is, I'm just going to create a brand new um, layer with all these things merged on them. Um, so it applies to the whole thing. I've just tied this bottom layer though. So, uh, shortcut for that is Control, Shift, Alt, and E. So it merges everything that's visible, but adds it as a brand new layer. It just means you can hide everything else there. Um, and so everything's been pushed together on the same layer, but it doesn't delete or merge everything you've already got beforehand. So it's considered a kind of a non destructive way of working again. Go up to uh, Filter, 3D, and Generate Normal Map. Um, hmm, do I need to tick? Nope, it's, it's good, it's good. It's remembered it, so uh, that's fine. Uh, I just, do I need to invert it? I think that one might be better. So we can see more of what's going on with Rumi. And, we, and feel free to play around with this as well, in terms of getting the details. 100% seems fine and we can play with these as well so we can adjust this up here bring this down here it just makes the detail more pronounced that seems to be okay cool. click OK to confirm hide that there and then we'll just go and save as cross underscore n, n for normal map 
Um, so if you're not familiar with normal maps, normal maps are a way of creating uh, the illusion of detail. Um, sorry, um, yeah, the illusion, uh, the illusion of detail. It creates detail on on the on your model without having to kind of use lots of polygons, which become computationally expensive. Um, and it's, it's it kind of it it does create. Um, elements of height in there as well, so it's not just detail, it's, it's, it's height, but um, as I say, it's this illusion really, just because it's it's the software that's allowing it to make it look like it's um, 3D. Um, obviously you couldn't have something you know massive extruding out or anything like that, but um, just like detail on something that should work. So I'm just going to try and add it here, so if we go into this bit, um, where can I add it, is it down here? Bump map, there we go, I think going can add to bump map, just check though. Down here. No, that seems good. So click on where it says no map, and then um, we could have dragged the image in again, just dragged it onto there. But if you're doing it, uh, just go to bitmap there, desktop, and then where are you? Did I not save it? Correct. Oh, it saved it as a PSD file. That was silly. Whoa, what are you doing? Okay, so go back. File save as PNG, I'm obviously completely on purpose showing you all the wrong things to do, you know, so you guys do it right, learn from my mistakes. This, is, this of course, is not intentional, I'm not intentionally messing up here. So I just right click and then click clear, try that again. Bitmap desktop, there it is, click open. Um, awesome, and I did notice as well. Um, again, going up, go up to parent, and come down here. That it's currently set to 0 0.3. So let's just change that to one, so it's on full. Um, and let's see what that looks like on the render. So let's see if it's made a difference. It's made a little bit of difference. It looks a tiny little bit more detailed from there. Um, so not a huge amount, but a little bit. And there you go, that's how you can make a holy hand grenade, um, looking at using the Arnold renderer with Arnold materials, um, we've used um, standard surface, uh, but we've also just used the physical material there at the end to bring in like that um, custom map that we did in Photoshop, um, setting up an unwrap UVW um, on Studio Max. So I hope this tutorial was really helpful to you guys and you learned some new techniques, uh, feel free to send me any comments. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.